Hi guys, so me and the dog have just got back from a long, long drive to collect this beautiful thing. It doesn't look much at the moment in its individual components, but I've had to split it down for the journey home um, because we, this, obviously the glass is, is fragile and I didn't want any mistakes on the way home, any, any accidents. Um, people often ask us, where do we find our stuff? And uh, how do we go about the restoration of it? Well, this is, that's the reason why we thought we'd start showing you more about how we go about the restoration and document this very, very special thing. Um, so this is a Chance Brothers lighthouse lens that was originally in a, uh, in a leading light or a small lighthouse in Baron Furness. The guy I bought it from inherited it from his dad who'd had it in storage for 30, 40 years. His dad was a, uh, a demolition man um, who, who scrapped this small lighthouse in Barrow and he was allowed to keep anything he wanted from the job while he kept the lens. And I'm really glad he did because this is one of the rarest lighthouse lenses you can find. And not only is it super rare, uh, and when it's finished, uh, not only will it look really, really beautiful, I'm sure of it, um, but it's one of the more practical ones. I mean, this, when it's finished, is, is something that can actually fit inside a home or a beautiful restaurant. So we're particularly excited about it and this seems like a great first opportunity to, to do a series of videos about, uh, about how we go about things and where we get them from. Right, well, so this is Dave. Dave's the expert in putting things back together and taking things apart. So Dave, you've not seen this before and I saw it assembled, so I'll just explain quickly what we need to do. Please, if you could, using anything that we've got in the workshop, don't need to find anything brass or bronze for a minute. Stain this is fine. We'll get it put back together, please. Just slaughter it together and see what. And we'll have like. a look, and then we can start deciding how we're how we're going to finish it off. And make it look proper. Yeah. All right, bub. Mario. Thank you. That's all that. So often the plates are missing on these sorts of things. You can see how much pride was put into the making of these things and nobody ever saw them other than the lighthouse keeper. All tucked away in a big tower. How do you think the UNC? What does UNC stand for Dave? Unified National Course, or something coarse, anyway. Little thing, then you've got your UNFs, you've got loads of different threads. Was UNC like an old standard? It is, but Whitworth was older, he was the first man to start, sort it all out. Before nuts and bolts used to be made all bloody individually, you made a nut that fit your bolt and all this and the other. When you go to places, you buy a bag of, bag of bolts and a bag of nuts, and the best one what fit was the one you used. And Whitworth standardised it all. British engineering. I was told once, you know, that at Chance Brothers, it used to take two blokes, the best part of three months, to hand cut and hand polish one of these segments. I've got a feeling this is going to look absolutely incredible. How many years of grime do you think is on that lens then? Well, it was stuck in the tower for a hundred years. The maker's plate here says 1881 when it was made. And that tower that it was in in Barrow and Furness was demolished in the 70s. So yeah, it did the best part of a hundred years. It's best that lighthouse, lighthouse keeper's job would have been to keep their lenses clean. Yeah, yeah, the lenses would have, yeah, for sure. You wouldn't have been so worried about anything else. But the, the candle burner was a big lump of brass. Uh, and so removing that to fill it or service it. Um, and the gas 
the gas burner was also a cumbersome sort of heavyweight thing and getting them in and out you'd always knock the glass you always find nibbles on the inside especially and then to get it out of the tower because i've seen photos of the tower it was in whilst whilst demo you know doing a demolition job it survived really well actually to be fair um because this would have been 40, 60 foot up in the air in a very, very narrow tower. Um, so he definitely took it out with some some care. But the grime, yeah, it's been in a barn for the last 50 years. Yeah. Right, you going on? No, I'm getting him in a minute. This is what Not today. Not today. So that bit down there, does that go on first? I'm not too sure yet. What yeah, so that's definitely something that's been made later. So as it's gone from its first oil burning burner to gas to electric, during those conversion over the course of 100 years, somebody's made that. Um, that's a bulb fitting there. So that's the most modern thing. It'd only take a very faint light, actually. The glass does all the refracting and all the concentrating of the beam so without even putting this back on i think we've already made a decision that we're not going to get a blacksmith in to refabricate that we're going to find some other other way of doing it because that's detracting from the piece in general yeah well the base is going to get done so that'll look really really smart um so what treatment will that need mark will that be shot blast first yeah then. it'll have to be soda or sandblasted i think sand will be enough sand yeah, will be all right it's hard that. isn't it it'll yeah, take it scary. can't hurt it um and we're talking a neutral color <laughs> i think originally from what i can see at the paintwork does that look like a it's like a oxide red yeah Thank which is it's good to keep it original <laughs> yeah if you knock this over ned you owe me tens of thousands of pounds. <laughs> Mind you, there's going to be to take a hell of a lot of uh, knocking over there. Yeah, you have to be a rugby league player, not a rugby unit. <laughs> <laughs> not that old. The purposes of display. Can we get this in here? And that's how the glass gets chipped. Yeah. Not by me today. <laughs> oh, I yeah, yeah, might be sacked. Now what's that so we'd for? Get that, we'd strip and polish that so it looked like gold. And that is, if anything, it's an inch high. But that it? it's no. Yeah, but that tube can be altered down an inch. Yeah, yeah could it? We're that, yeah. adjustable. We, we can adjust that tube down. So we've got they're about a quarter of an inch, though, aren't we? That's enough. So we'll get the polar, we're going to get the burner polished. Yeah. Get it electrified. You do your magic on that. Yep. We'll get this disassembled so we get it to the coat as you're going on Friday, aren't you? Yeah. So we've got a couple of days to fully decide, fully decide on the colour. Black's in the lead at the moment. I'm saying black purely because there's going to be something beautiful and gold inside. Yeah, brass will pop. Right? Yeah, it will. I can't see where I am with lens there. Bulb would go there, that wouldn't be a problem, would it? Here we go. And straight into that, so we'll just turn that now to in there. Oh. Be alright, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. So that's just look good. Perfect. That's where we'll have to be, innit?
just stripping down this triple gas burner so we can get it ready to be polished. What's inside, Peter? Isn't it? It's got a diaphragm in there. Um, there's a few other odds and sod springs and stuff, but what we normally do is just completely gut the inside out so we can run the cable straight through and then all the way up. Everything that's left in there isn't really needed, really. There you go, look. So we need to take all this lot out so we can get the cable up through. It can be a bit of a job sometimes because a lot of it's seized in. But I'm sure we'll be able to get it out. Pete stripped it all down, cleared it all up. All these separate elements are now ready to be polished. Beautiful. We've just got back from the powder coaters. First choice finishes in Exeter. Top load. Uh, and the stand's done. It's all right, Pete. I'll unload this. Give us a hand, Pete. That's all right. It's the desk actually. Cool. So yeah, the stand's back. Delighted. Great job. Looks nice. It does look nice. Uh, we've got the components out of the van as well. So it's time to go and get Dave and Pete and Dave can put this back together. The only decision now really that we knew we'd have to make at some point was what to put it on. Cool, all right, let's go and get Dave. So the boy's been busy in the workshop completing this gorgeous lighthouse lens. The triple Arga burner, Dalen pattern. I'll tell you about the Dalen pattern another time, but there's a really interesting story about that. That's all polished, getting wired, updated. That obviously originally a gas burning piece of kit, but we've wired it up to, to be electric. And the base is looking great. We've had the teak base turned there and from our stock of old gorgeous Royal Navy bronze nuts and bolts. We've had it mounted on this base. You can even see the screws at the bottom. You'll never see them, but they're man-sized screws. As I say, from lovely old Royal Navy stock, routed out the bottom, wired up. It's gonna get finished today, hopefully. And so we'll come back later and we'll see how it looks. It's finished, it's ready, the guys have put it back together. I'm bloody delighted. It looks absolutely stunning. This is probably one of the best things we've ever had. For me personally, it ticks all the boxes. It had the thrill of the chase. Uh, the deal was hard to get done, but I got it done. Um, the the uh, the restoration of it, I'm so proud of our guys. It's obvious to me now that we, there's nothing that's beyond our skill set. Uh, and Pete and Dave have done a fantastic job on all of it. The glass is now clean. As you can see, I always knew that it was gonna look 10 times better with the glass clean, but even I wasn't prepared for, for how gorgeous and stunning it looks. Um, 
few little details, you know, the, the maker's plate at the back. It, it's always quite difficult to, to work out how far to restoration, restore these things. Um, you know, even the maker's plate had a lovely sort of patina to it, but we've had that polished. We've got some guy to, to inlay the, the, the letters again, so that looks fab. And uh, I'm absolutely made up with it, and I, I'm sure that it's going to make a, an absolute feature of, uh, of someone's coastal home or coastal marine business. It's, it's a work of art, you know, and as I said earlier in the video, it's, it was designed to be purely functional and it's, uh, it's no accident that it's with that amount of design and quality involved and finesse that it's ended up looking like a sculptural object. original stand I've only ever seen one on the market and it didn't have its original stand and in fact that's that was hundred thousand dollars this is going to be a lot less than that we don't we don't play those games necessarily but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this the first of our restoration videos from start to finish uh, we've already got plans for the next one but uh, and, and it's it's a pretty magnificent thing we're going to do next but I don't know, this is going to take some beating. So again, keep your eye on YouTube channel or subscribe to our newsletter just so you, you can get you know, the first glance at these sorts of objects and, and see how we do things here.